in this video I'm going to be giving you a quick guide on how to get your Sega Master System games running so much better with no sprite flicker. And we're going to be doing this with the Genesis Plus GX emulator. Now I've tried a bunch of other overclocking options for a bunch of other emulators and they do generally break a lot of the games. However, with Sega Master System and the GX Plus Core, it works fantastically well and doesn't really break hardly any of these games. Even cycles are left intact. One of the best examples to show overclocking in action is actually Sonic the Hedgehog. And we have this infamous bridge here, which is renowned for slowing the game down to a slideshow. So here it is before overclocking, and here it is after overclocking. And you can see that it makes this game perform so much better. And honestly, overclocking Sonic here absolutely transforms the entire game. It feels just so much better. Controls are more responsive. You know that slowdown isn't going to interrupt your jumps, so you're not going to misjudge them. So yeah, I really can't understate how much better it makes Sonic feel. It feels like how it should have been at full speed with no slowdown. So I'm just going to show you how to do this with Xenon 2 Mega Blast, as it's the most infamous Sega Master System game that runs like crap. So I've started this up with the Genesis GX Plus Core inside RetroArch, and we're just going to start the game to see how terribly it actually runs. And as you can see, we've already got slowdown and a bunch of sprite flicker. And this slowdown is terrible. So we're going to fix it. So go to the quick menu in RetroArch, go down to core options, and then go into emulation hacks. And then down to CPU speed. And this is the overclocking function. Now this does go up in increments of 25% up to 200%. And we're going to set it at 200% because this game runs so slowly. So let's go back to the game and see what that does. And as you can see, the difference is night and day. I mean, it actually makes it playable. I mean, it's almost good. What the hell? Who would have thought Xenon 2 would have been good? Anyway, I'm going to put these side by side from the beginning just so you can see the difference. Obviously, not all games are going to need overclocking, and other games might only just need a little bit. And there's no point in overclocking beyond what you need, because you're just going to be increasing your chances of breaking stuff. So bring the game up to the speed that you want it to be, and stop there. Now the way I actually like to do this on a per game basis is start at 200% and dial it back if I need to. And this is because it's easier to notice differences going backwards than it is going forward, so going from 100% and then increasing it. If you are using overclocking, you shouldn't be using the remove per line sprite limit. And this is because overclocking on its own removes a lot of the sprite flicker, which is the only reason you use this option for. The only time I would use this is if I've got to keep a game at 100%, but it's still got sprite flicker. And even then, I tend to steer clear of it because it's more likely to break stuff than overclocking on its own. There we go, that's how to overclock your Sega Master System games and get them running even better than on original hardware. Now, if you like today's content, give me a thumbs up, and if you want to keep up to date with these quick guides, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.